Hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you all here again. My name's Serena, and I'm from Grace Christian Fellowship. So I've got the word of the Lord for you today, and we're going to be talking about dwelling with the King. What better place is there than to dwell with the King, the Lord Jesus? Well, I'm going to read from 1 Chronicles 4, verse 23. I'm only just going to read one or two verses out, so you can look at it if you want to, and if not, you can just have a listen. And 1 Chronicles lists out the names of the people in the tribes of Israel, um, the genealogies, so-and-so begat so-and-so, so-and-so begat so-and-so. Um, and they're quite long and a bit tedious. I wasn't say that, but it is a bit tedious, isn't it? The Chronicles are probably written by Ezra, the scribe. Um, and chapter 4 lists the names of the people in the tribe of Judah. So that's how it starts off. Uh, so I'm going to read verse 21 to 23 from 1 Chronicles 4, uh, verse 21 to 23. Just a couple of verses. And it says, this, oh, lots of different names here, so you have to excuse my pronunciation. The sons of Shelah, son of Judah, Ur, the son of Lekar, Laodar, the father of Marishah, and the clans of the linen workers at Beth Ashbeah, Jochim, the men of Koziba, and Joash and Saraph, who ruled in Moab, and Jashubi, Lehem. These records are from ancient times. Verse 23 says, They were the potters who lived at Netaim and Gedorah. They stayed there and worked for the king. Okay, now if you read the King James, it says, verse 23 says, These were the potters and those that dwelt among plants and hedges. There they dwelt with the king for his work. They dwelt there with the king. Uh, and one other version says that they, they dwelt, uh, there they dwelt, occupied in the king's work. So it implies that these people, the potters, lived in a place with the king, or probably on his land. Um, we're told certain things about these people in verse 23. Uh, we know their names. It mentions those in the previous verse. We know where they lived and what they did. And we know their location in regards to the king. They were the potters that dwelt with the king. And that sort of made me think, that's an interesting verse. Why have they slotted that little bit in there? So I thought I'd have a look at it. Uh, so it says these people, they were potters, and apparently they lived in two places called Netaim and Gedara. And if you research that a little bit, it sounds like they were places of plants or hedges. So they either lived there or they lived with people who were gardeners or something along those lines. But these potters, they worked for the king and they lived with or near him probably on his property. And so in Chronicles, this chapter in Chronicles, we just have this little scripture, a little bit of detail about the potters being dropped in here in amongst the list of all the names of different people. And it specifically says the potters lived and worked with the king. So I thought I'm going to have a look at that. So we could ask ourselves, well, what did these potters do? Well, obviously, you know, I've been doing a bit of pottery myself, so I could probably tell you a little bit of what they did. They probably made pots for the king, for the king's household. Uh, maybe they made plates to eat off of or bowls to hold food. They might have made cups to drink from or they might have made huge vases to hold beautiful flowers. We don't know. But for some reason, they were the king's potters and they dwelt with or near him. They were skilled people, obviously, they would have had to have been if they were making things for the king. But you know what? They were making probably quite ordinary, everyday objects, quite simple things. And it was sort of a bit of a menial task, making things, making all these pottery, just ordinary plates and things. But it says that they stayed with the king to perform this task. I thought that's interesting. I'm going to have a, have a little bit of a look at that. And isn't that what each one of us needs to do? We may not be high-ranking officials, and I'm sure there were some uh, who were near the king. We're not courageous soldiers in the king's army. 
Uh, We're not famous preachers or evangelists who preach to thousands. We might not be leaders of huge churches um, or politicians responsible for the whole country making big decisions. No, do you not? We're like the potters who perform useful but perhaps small tasks. They might not feel small to us, but in the greater scheme of things, they're probably sort of fairly ordinary small tasks that we all have to perform in the service of the king. But you know what? The important thing is we still need to live with the king to do our tasks. That's what the scripture implies. Whatever we do, whatever our work is, whether it's in the church, whether it's in our families, whether it's out in the community, whatever work we do, however noble or even menial or simple the tasks, we need to dwell with the king to perform them. Maybe you're the person who opens up the church. Maybe you're the person who puts the sign outside. We have a person who puts our sign out. And you know what? I'm always so glad when I drive up and the sign's already out, especially when it's raining. What a great task that someone does. They put our sign out for us. Maybe you're the person that makes the tea. Maybe you organise some of the meetings at church. And in a small church, these can be quite small tasks. They might seem like, you know, not huge things with a small group of people. But they're still very necessary, like the potters. The potters had a menial task to do, but it was an important one. And they stayed near the king to do even that simple task. Maybe you try and witness to your family, to your work colleagues um, or your neighbours. Might be just a quiet word every now and then. Simple little task. Maybe you try and do good wherever you go. Just have a smile on your face and be nice to people in the supermarket when there's a woman with, you know, a thousand and one objects on the, you know, on the counter in front of you. I'm going to keep smiling. I'm going to be patient, Lord, and smile at the lady who's trying hard. A simple task. Maybe we try and shine for Jesus in our everyday life. Maybe we pray and intercede for the nation that nobody else sees, nobody else hears. You know, I always think of Sunday school teachers when I talk of these sort of tasks because um, Sunday school is a hard job. I did it for many years and, you know, you're usually there or we were there about an hour or so before church, before everybody else turns up. And I used to work all week, then I'd spend all Saturday afternoon preparing Sunday school, then all, you know, Sunday morning and a little bit of the afternoon doing church, and then you come home and flake out in the afternoon. It's a sort of, you know, it's not a task that everybody wants to do, doing Sunday school. It's an important task, and you need to stay near the king to do it, whatever we do. Uh, A commentary here says, the work of the church, comparable to that of the potters is not always popular. Only a few are willing to do the humble and necessary work of the church. Isn't that true, isn't it? We need to dwell with the king and stay close to him to achieve our ordinary everyday tasks, to make sure that we succeed in them. And isn't things easier with Jesus? A simple task that you think, that's going to be easy. Sometimes you go out and it's a disaster. You think, do you know what? I didn't invite the Lord into that. And then you maybe go and think, I've got a really difficult task today, Lord. Right, come and strengthen me and be with me. And do you know what? It just flies by as if there's no effort at all because we involve the Lord in it. It's important that we dwell with him to, to do our everyday work. Why is that, you might say? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? The closer we are to him, the better we will perform our tasks, whatever they are. He's well able to inspire us for even something simple um, so that we can be successful in what we do. You know, we, we moved from our previous church building to the current one uh, that we're in at the moment. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, we just moved there. I'll go out and deliver some leaflets. And it's quite a big area, you know, um, large estate nearby. I thought, oh, there's thousands of houses out on that estate, Lord. How am I going to do that? It's probably only me and perhaps Les, maybe one or two other people that are going to do this. 
And do you know what? The Lord showed me a picture. I just kind of kept seeing this row of houses in my head. I thought, I've got to deliver leaflets to that row of houses. And it was a row of houses that a lady who used to come to church like over 30 years ago, she used to live in. And I often thought, I wonder if she still lives there. But all I could see in my head was that I've got to deliver these leaflets, to particularly to that row of houses. So I did, and I delivered some to other people as well. You know, put some um, adverts through the letter boxes so um, people knew that we were in this church building. And um, I thought, fair enough, you know. And you don't always get a lot of response, do you? Just praying that someone will see the see a leaflet and come in, you know, like like uh, you do here. And then I thought, ooh. Maybe I ought to go and do that big estate. Ugh. And it was getting to, near, to be near winter. I thought, oh, I don't fancy that, Lord. Trekking around all those thousands of houses, Lord. So I kind of left it, didn't do that. And um, left it a few months. And then later on, a lady walked into church. And I looked at her and thought, I know you. I knew you about 30 years ago. And it was the lady that lived in the house in that row of houses that I saw, you know, the Lord showed me a picture that I delivered. And she said, yeah, I got, your, I got your leaflet. She didn't know it was us, you know, the church that she'd been to before. And I said, I can't believe it's you. It's so great to see you again. And you know what? Her and her friend, they come to church now. It's absolutely amazing. But you know what? I could have slogged all around that enormous estate. And okay, maybe one day I will. But the Lord told me which row of houses became one person that he wanted to rein in with, as a, you know, with a fishing rod, draw them in. And both of them come, and they love singing the old choruses that we sing. Didn't like the sort of new, new songs from a, a different church that she went to. Do you know what? Praying and asking God about what to do made me successful. And I gave out the leaflets that were necessary. I didn't waste my time and energy in an enormous estate that perhaps wouldn't have yielded any fruit. But I listened to the Lord, staying close to the king, hearing his voice saying, just deliver them to that area. And it was successful. In order to perform our tasks well, we need to stay close to the king and dwell with him. Well, what does it mean to dwell with the Lord? You know, we're not physically dwelling with him, are we? Um, but what we can think, what does it mean when you live with someone? Well, it means certain things, doesn't it? It means you're kind of intimately evolved and aware of everything they do. Um, do they make you a cup of tea in the morning? Do they leave the toilet seat up? Do they squeeze the toothpaste from the middle of the tube? You know, which really annoys some people, doesn't it? You know everything that they do when you live with someone, good and bad. What else? Well, you probably communicate more with that person, probably, than you do with anyone else when you live with someone. You tell them everything that's gone on during the day. You tell them the highs and the lows. You know exactly what they like and what they don't like. You know, oh, I'll buy them some of those biscuits because they're their favourite. I'll just get them some of those. You know what they're likely to do and you know what they're likely to want you to do as well. I know they're going to come home from, tea, from work late and they're going to want their tea quickly because they'll be hungry. I know that because, you know, they do that all the time. That's what it's like when we live with someone. We know certain things about that person and they know things about us. You know, my mum used to say, when my dad came in from work, used to come in at work six o'clock every night, and she'd say to us, now don't go and run and jump on your dad as soon as he comes through the door because he'll be tired. Let him sit down, have his tea, and then you can go and sort of jump on him and say hello. She knew. She knew what my dad was like. All of those things you know when you live with someone. And it's the same when we live or when we dwell with Jesus, our King. Um, we pray and meet with him every day. We talk to him regularly. We're mindful of his word and what he says and what he wants. And um, when we ask him about all the little things or big things in our lives, he can direct us. That's what it means by living with the King, staying close to him. It's a bit like a servant who's always got their ear open on what the mistress or the master wants. They're just waiting. That's what we're like when we're living close to Jesus. We're keeping in constant communication with him, aware of what he wants. Perhaps we can communicate with him more than anyone else. 
we know what he wants. So that's something to remember, isn't it? That we need to make sure we're dwelling with the king in our everyday lives uh, as we perform those probably simple everyday tasks that we need to do. Just like the potters did as they made the pots and the plates and they dwelt with the king. So that was one thing that I thought about. And then I, as I was reading it, I thought it was interesting because in that passage that I read out, it actually talks about two lots of people. Uh, it gives lots of names, but two, two groups of people that perform a task. Uh, in verse 21, it mentions the linen workers. And it says, the sons of Shelah, son of Judah, Ur, the father of Lakar, Ladar, the father of Marash, Marash, and the clans of the linen workers at Beth Ashbeer. And then in verse 23, as we've said, it talks about the potters who stayed and lived with the king. Now, what struck me is that um, why is it the potters who live with the king? Why does the scripture say the potters lived with the king? It doesn't say that of the linen workers, does it? It said the linen workers live somewhere else. So I thought to myself, Lord, why is it that you made the point in your word, which is eternal and there forever, that you wanted to record that the potters dwelt with the king? So I thought, I'm going to have a think about that. The linen workers had an important job. Um, linen was used for clothing of different kinds, for sheets, for curtains, for sails of ships, for dress in religious services. The priests wore linen. Kings and royal persons, they wore fine linen. But it doesn't say the linen workers live with the king. So I thought, that's very interesting. Why is it that the potters lived with the king and not the linen workers? But you know, it doesn't say specifically, but here are my thoughts on the subject. You may or may not agree. Firstly, maybe the linen workers didn't live with the king. The reason was that they had to live closer to the fields where all the flax was grown. Because they used to cut the flax from the fields, didn't they? And then dry it and grind it and pound it and spin it and weave it. Maybe they had to go and live. It was better for them to live near the fields. Maybe their occupation meant that they couldn't live that close to the king. Maybe it stopped them being close to him. Perhaps we could ask ourselves, is my job or my occupation, my hobby, my lifestyle, stopping me from getting close to the king? Something we need to think about, isn't it? It's very easy to say, oh, I'm so busy this week, I, I can't make Sunday church. I, oh, I run a football team on Sunday morning. I can't, I can't come to church on Sunday morning now. Our occupation can separate us and stop us from being close to the king. Perhaps that's why. Number two, second thought. Perhaps the potters live with the king because symbolically, clay and pottery is often a picture of weakness, weakness and, um, and fragility something that's easily broken. In the book of Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar has a vision of an idol, doesn't he? This great idol made from different uh, materials. And it says the feet and the toes are part potter's clay and part iron. And that meant, that was a kind of picture of we the weakness of clay and the strength of iron. Perhaps clay is a picture of weakness. In Isaiah, God says he can destroy rebellious Israel like the breaking of the potter's vessel. It's a picture of weakness. So maybe, is my second thought, maybe the potters dwell with the king because they, there was an aspect of weakness about them. Maybe we dwell closer to the king when we're weak and fragile. And that's true, isn't it? Because when you come across something that you can't do and you think, oh, Lord, this is just beyond me, we have to be even closer to the king. We have to draw closer in prayer to God because of our weakness and our fragility. Maybe it's symbolically that they were weaker and that's why they stayed closer to the king. Those of us who are weaker have to stay close to him because our strength is in him. The weaker we are, the closer we need to be with him. There's an old story that... Um, 
a fable. I'll, I'm just going to read out to you. I found this in a passage. And it says, Hercules fought with a giant, but he could not kill him. Hercules being the strong man, isn't he? Hercules flung the giant down with all his might, but every time the giant got up, stronger than before. The old fable said that the earth was the giant's mother, and every time he fell, he touched the ground and got new strength from her. So every time a Christian falls on his knees and draw near, draws near to God, he gets new strength. Perhaps that's why the potters live closer to the king, because there's an element of weakness about them, about what they do. Okay, third point. Maybe the potters lived with the king because it was a lowly occupation. It wasn't one of the great occupations, as we said. Maybe it's a picture that the more lowly and humble we are, the closer to the king we can be. The scripture says that um, uh, he resists the proud, but he accepts the lowly and the humble. That's Psalm 138. So perhaps that's one way we can stay close to the king, by making sure we remain humble about what we do and not getting proud or lifted up. What about another point, number four? Perhaps it was because their job, although menial and lowly, was very necessary for the king's household. Perhaps that's why the king kept them close, because he knew that their tasks were needed. When a pot was broken, they needed another one. Perhaps it was handy to have the potters nearby. Just throw us another plate so that we can, uh, you know, re replace the ones that are broken. They're easily broken, these pots. Some little servant that's a bit clumsy keeps breaking the pots. Maybe that's why it was very necessary, although menial and perhaps a little unimportant in one way, very necessary. Lowly occupation, but necessary. If you think about different occupations and how necessary they are. For example, um, I do the church accounts and uh, I need an accountant sometimes, but I only go and see that accountant once a year. That's all I ever do. But you know what? Some people who perhaps need a cleaner, they're going to need that person every week or every fortnight. A much more lowly occupation, the cleaner perhaps you would say, but more necessary to some people. I've got a friend who has a lot of mobility issues and she has a cleaner once a fortnight. And you know what? She could not cope without that cleaner's help. Simple task, a lowly task, but very necessary. She needs to keep this cleaner nearer to her. She sees her every week rather than perhaps something, some other task that's a little bit more, you know, like the accountant we might only see once a year. Not a high-ranking profession, but a lowly occupation, but necessary important. Perhaps that's why the king keeps the potters close to him, because they're important. And finally, number five, maybe it's written that the potters lived with the king because God is a potter. He's described in the scripture as being a potter. Maybe he likes having people around him that are interested in the same thing as he is. And that's true, isn't it? You know, we, we tend to gravitate towards people who are interested in the same thing. Birds of a feather flock together, they say. Maybe that's why the king keeps the potters close, because he himself identifies as being a potter. Do you know what? If we're interested in doing God's will then we're going to be able to get much closer to him than somebody who wants to go off and do their own thing. God is interested in us when we are interested in seeing his will done rather than just you know, doing what we want. God is interested in people who are interested in him. Now, he loves everybody, we know that. But if you want to get God's attention, if you want to find out what he's interested in, Start caring about what he cares about. And what does he care about? Well, he cares about the lost, doesn't he? He cares about the gospel going forth. He cares about carrying out his word, obedience to his word, showing compassion on people, loving the unlovely, instead of just caring about our own life. 
Verse 23, as we said, these were the potters uh, who lived at Netem and Gadara. They lived there with the king for his work. And another version says they were occupied with the king's work. They lived with the king for his work. That is why we stay close to Jesus, so that we can do his work. And that, in a sense, makes us uh, closer to him anyway. I think he draws us closer when he knows that we are, your will be done, Lord. You just show me what to do and, and we'll do it. That's a way to be closer to him. The potters did the king's work. They lived near him to do it. He wanted to keep them close. Another idea is that actually the potter in Hebrew means one who forms something, one who makes something, to produce something. And you know what? We can't produce anything of value or anything of usefulness if we are not close to the Lord. It's all useless and wasted time. We need to be close to the king to know what he wants us to do and then we don't waste our time doing things that are irrelevant to him, that he didn't want necessarily to happen. So that's how we need to be, humble servants who are occupied with the king's work. So what an interesting scripture, just hidden among all those long list of names that nobody can pronounce. Sometimes there's a little gem hidden in there. Let's stay close to the king so that we can do his work and at the end of time we can receive well done thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of the Lord. Amen. Let's be like the potters, humble, close to the Lord, useful for him and interested in what he wants to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord.